In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to install and configure a Windows 2022 DHCP server. DHCP, or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, it's a protocol that's used to automatically and dynamically configure your DHCP clients. In this tutorial, we're going to install a Windows DHCP server. We're going to add the role via Server Manager. However, it could be done via PowerShell as well too. By having DHCP on the network, it eliminates the need for manual client configuration. It also eliminates errors with misconfiguration. A DHCP server can service many subnets at the same time. And you want to consider deploying multiple DHCP servers for redundancy and to be able to increase the reliability of the service itself. Let's review what our network diagram looks like. So in these video series, we've been deploying a variety of different types of roles to our network. We currently have two Active Directory domain controllers. We have a standalone DNS server. And now we're going to be configuring Server D as a DHCP server. Notice we're on the 192.168.1 network. Each of the servers points to two DNS servers for maximum reliability. Our DHCP clients on the network will receive their IP configuration from Server D. And that's what we'll be reviewing in today's tutorial. OK, let's start with our Windows 2022 DHCP server. We just completed the installation of the server, so we'll need to configure its IP address and join it to the domain. I'm going to go ahead and sign in as with a local account. All right, now that I'm signed in, I'm going to click on this left local server link. First thing we're going to do is we're going to change the IP address of this system. I'm going to click on this Ethernet link here to be able to get to the IP version 4 properties. I'm going to right click Ethernet and Properties. And I'm going to click IPv version 4 properties. And I'm going to assign this server at a static IP address 192.168.1.4.255.255.255.0. We're going to point this server to server A 192.168.1.1 and server B because those servers are running Active Directory as well as DNS. I'm going to hit OK and close. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this computer. Click on Change. Let's give this a new name. We'll call it Server D. I'm going to hit OK and that's going to require a reboot. Okay, let's sign in. Next, we're going to join the domain. Let's go to local server. Let's go to workgroup. Change. Click domain. Type in the name of the domain that this server will belong to. In our example, it's domain.local. Click OK. Let's provide the credentials. We'll join the domain using the domain administrator account. Click OK. OK, it looks like we were able to successfully join the domain. Let's click OK, and this will also require a restart. Now we're going to sign into this 2022 DHCP server. We can now use a domain account to sign into this system. I'll click Other User. And again, I'll just sign as the domain administrator. This is the first time that I sign into the system, so a new profile will be created. Now that we've signed in, we can proceed by adding the DHCP role to this system. Let's click on Manage. Add roles and features. You can skip this first page by default. We've seen this before in other videos. All it's letting us know is that you should have a strong administrator password, make sure that you have a static IP address for the server, and make sure the system is updated with Windows security patches. Click Next. We're doing a role-based or feature-based installation. 
We're selecting server D. We're choosing DHCP server. Add the additional features that are recommended. These are the admin console tools. Notice we don't have any additional roles installed in this system. This system is not an Active Directory server, nor is it a DNS server either. It's strictly going to run DHCP services. Click Next. No additional features to add, so click Next. Again, make sure you have a static IP address on this system. And before you install DCP, you should have a plan for the subnets that you're going to be servicing. Once you have that, click Next. And install. Notice that the installation has been completed. However, additional configuration is required. We're ready to complete that configuration, so let's click on Complete DHCP Configuration. If you're not ready to proceed, you can close this and come back at a later time and access it through the notification icon. Let's proceed. To finalize the installation and configuration of the ACP, Active Directory will create two additional groups, the ACP administrators and the ACP users. The first group administrators will provide the users in that group complete full control of this service. The second group called the ACP users will provide users in that group read access to the service. You'll also need to authorize the DHCP server at some point. The service won't start until you authorize it. Click Next. Because we're logged in as the domain administrator, we can use those credentials to authorize the service. Let's click Commit. Notice that both the security groups and the authorization has been completed. Click Close to continue. Now we can click Close on this window and proceed. Let's click on Tools. Let's click on DACP. I'll minimize Server Manager and expand this admin console. Notice by default we've connected to Server D. Let's expand it. We'll be working with IP version 4 scopes. Let's go ahead and create our first scope. I'm going to right click IP version 4 and say New Scope. We start with the New Scope Wizard. Click Next. Let's give a name to our first scope. I'll just call it Scope 1. You should always pick a name that is descriptive about the subnet you'll be servicing with this DHCP scope. Click Next. Let's give it a start and an end address. We're servicing the 192.168.1 network. So I will include the entire range of that subnet. Make sure you have the appropriate subnet mask. Click Next. In our network, we're going to exclude some of the addresses that are being used for our servers. These are the static IP addresses that we want to use. I'll exclude 192.168.1.1 through 192, 168, 1.20. This will give me the first set of addresses that I can use to statically assign servers and other network devices. I'll click Add and click Next. How long you choose for your lease duration depends on what subnet you're servicing. If this is a traditional office building that has desktops, a five to eight day lease is appropriate. If this scope is going to be servicing, for instance, a Wi-Fi network where clients are coming and going, you'll probably want a very short lease duration, maybe in minutes or an hour. We're just going to go ahead with the default for this tutorial. Let's click Next. If we want to configure additional DHCP options, we can at this point. Let's do that. I'll click Next. Our network has no default gateway. But if this network was connected to other networks, such as the Internet, you want to put the routers gateway address there. You can also add the domain name and DNS servers. Domain.local was automatically detected and we have our .1 and .2 DNS servers listed here. This is the appropriate configuration for our clients. Let's click Next. We're not going to have any Win servers deployed. Actually Wins hasn't been in use for many many years. We'll just click Next to continue. And let's go ahead and activate the scope now. We'll click Next and finish. Alright, if I expand my scope and I click on address leases, notice there are no leases yet that have been recorded. We're going to switch over to our Windows 10 client and see if we can obtain a lease successfully. 
Let me just use the administrator account of the domain and sign in. Let's get to the network properties of this system. I'm going to right click, go to network and internet settings, change its aperture options, right click my network card properties, click on IP version 4, click properties, and notice by default my Windows 10 client is set to obtain an IP address automatically. This is the configuration that we want for this client. It also will obtain the DNS server information automatically as well. Let's click OK. Let's click close. Let's close this window and let's close this window as well too. We can go to a command prompt to verify the IP address of this system. I'll type in ipconfig and we can see here that this client received the 192.168.1.21 address. It received 21 because we excluded 1 through 20. This looks like the correct configuration for this Windows 10 machine. Let's go back over to the server. On the server, I can now refresh address leases, and we can see that our client successfully received the lease. Looks like everything is in order, and as we add additional clients to this network, they'll be receiving their IP address configuration from this DHCP server. Well, that's it for this video tutorial. Appreciate you watching. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again.